Hi, my name is Mike Porter. I'm 48 years old. I'm an English teacher here at Wachung Hills, and I like to run a lot in the sense of I really, really enjoy it very, very, very much, and also in the sense of very, very long distances. How long? Well, in 2016, I signed up for a 12-hour ultramarathon. Uh, the race started at 9 o'clock at night, and we ran loops, a one-mile loop around the Sussex County Fairgrounds, and the race ended at 9 a.m. the following morning, and the winner was whoever did the most laps of the fairgrounds in that 12-hour period. Uh, and at the end of the race, uh, I was in first place. I had run 64 miles in one night. Now, you may be hearing that story and thinking, wow, this guy must be a really special athlete. Uh, but I'm here to convince you, I'm actually nothing special. I'm not that good. And honestly, most people, if you really wanted to do it and you were interested in it and you put enough time into it, you could probably do what I'm doing too. Uh, let me explain. Let me start with my, uh, where I started running. As a 15-year-old freshman at Shawnee High School, I was not a county champion. I was not a gifted, talented runner. As a matter of fact, I didn't make the varsity as a freshman. I didn't make the varsity as a sophomore or even as a junior. But I kept coming back, I kept working hard, and I kept improving. And when I was a senior, I finally made the varsity, barely. Uh, a cross-country team is seven guys. I was the number seven runner. I was the slowest runner on the cross-country team that year. Uh, but what happened to me that season, um, you see that picture of me on the trail there, the little guy behind me, his name was Ben. He was a freshman. He was a gifted, talented runner. And what happens to gifted, talented freshmen is they improve an awful lot very quickly. Uh, by the end of the season, he was not only beating me, he was beating the number six guy, the number five guy. So right before state sectionals, the coach came to me and said, Mike, uh, I appreciate how hard you've worked and how much you've improved, but I can't leave Ben off the line at states, so you're not running at states. I was very, very disappointed, uh, but I understood the coach's decision. Uh, but I kept going to practice anyway. Well, what happened was, uh, I think the number three runner on the team, a junior by the name of Tim, he kind of flaked out and cut practice a few times, and the coach kicked him off the team. And the coach turned to me and said, Mike, get your racing shoes out of retirement. You're running varsity at States on Saturday. So I got my chance to run varsity at States, not because I was a great runner, but just because I hung around long enough and kept working, and eventually, I got my shot. Now, my running as an adult kind of follows the same pattern. Uh, I decided I'd like to try to run some marathons. Uh, so I signed up for my first marathon in 1997. And what happened to me was a pretty typical story for first-time marathoners. I tried to do too much, too fast. I got injured. I had to take a couple of weeks off of training. I got back into it, and then, oh my goodness, it was time to run the marathon. Uh, I wasn't really prepared, but I gave it a try anyway. I ran pretty well for about the first 20 miles, and then I hit the wall. <laughs> uh, and I basically walked a whole lot more than I ran over the final 6.2 miles. But I finished, and I really enjoyed the experience. Uh, so I, I did it again. I met up with some friends, one who was a lot more experienced than I was, one who was a lot faster than I was. Uh, I listened to their advice, and I kept training, and, and I did a lot better for my second marathon. And I started thinking, hey, maybe I can qualify for the Boston Marathon. See, the Boston Marathon is really special for runners because you can't just sign up for Boston. You have to run another race first, and you have to run it fast enough to qualify. So uh, I had run a 322, and I was 29 years old. 
But when you're 18 to 34, you've got to run three hours and five minutes to qualify for Boston. So I was still, oh, about 17 minutes too slow. And I thought, ah, well, it's probably not going to happen. I'm probably not going to be able to qualify for Boston. But I enjoyed it, so I kept doing it. I kept running marathons. I kept training. Uh, and when I was 41, I ran the Scranton Marathon, and I finished in three hours and 29 minutes. And I looked back at the Boston Marathon qualifying times, and I realized as you get older, the qualifying times get slower. And I saw that, um, well, for a 40-year-old, I would have to run three hours and 15 minutes. I was still about 15 minutes too slow. But at 45, I only have to run three hours and 25 minutes. I was pretty close to that. And as a matter of fact, I had done that once before. So I took a four-year plan, and I kept training and trying to make little bits of improvements. And finally, at age 45, I went down to the Ocean Drive Marathon in Cape May, and I qualified for Boston. In other words, it took me 30 years <laughs> and eight tries in order to run fast enough uh, to qualify for the Boston Marathon. OK, so let me tell you a little bit about what I've learned from all this running and marathoning and ultramarathoning. All right, the number one rule, I think, is do the things that you enjoy. Do the things that you're passionate about, even if you're not very good at them. Because if you really love it and you really have a passion for it, you're going to stick with it. And what I've found is that most people overestimate what they can accomplish in one year, but they totally underestimate what they might be able to accomplish in like five years. In other words, if I told you to qualify for the Boston Marathon now, this year, uh, probably what would happen to you is exactly what happened to me. You'd try to do too much too fast, uh, you'd get injured, you probably wouldn't do it. But if I told you to take a nice long five-year approach to it, or a 30-year approach to it, who knows what you'd be able to accomplish over that long term. The other thing I've learned from marathoning and ultramarathoning is you've got to be prepared for the moment of doubt. In a marathon, it usually comes about the three-quarter mark, right around 20 miles. You've been at it for a really long time. You're tired. It hurts. The finish line is nowhere in sight. And you start thinking to yourself, I can't do it. This happens during the training cycle, too. If I'm training for 18 weeks to prepare for a marathon, Somewhere around the three-quarter mark, I start feeling tired and beat up. And I think, Ugh, this isn't worth it. This is no good. I shouldn't do it. When I was running that 12-hour ultramarathon, I knew the moment of doubt was going to hit me around 4.30 a.m., 5 a.m., <laughs> around the three-quarter mark, where I still had hours to go before the finish line. But you gotta, if you go into it with a strategy to get you through that moment of doubt, you're going to be OK. My strategy. I'm also an English teacher, so I'm a huge Shakespeare fan. My strategy at that 12-hour ultramarathon, I memorized this long, long speech from Henry V. In Henry V, they're attacking the French town of Harfleur. They've been at it for a long, long time, and they've just opened up a breach in the walls. And Henry V needs to encourage his troops to make one more assault and conquer the city. And he turns to his troops, and he says, once more unto the breach, dear friends, once more, or close the wall up with our English dead. And the speech goes on for about another 30 lines. OK, I memorized that speech. And every time I started to feel tired uh, or like I couldn't do it, I would recite that speech to me again, uh, to myself again. Uh, every time I came through the starting line, I would say, once more unto the breach, dear friends, once more. Uh, every time I felt low, I probably recited, if I ran 64 laps, I probably recited that speech to myself about 80 times. Uh, but that was my strategy to get myself through the moment of doubt. Now, when I tell people that I run ultra marathons and marathons, the question is usually, why, would you, why do you do this? And I'll tell you why. It's a quest. I'm trying to find out about myself. You see, I know that I have limits. 
but I honestly have no idea what they are. Because every time I've gone out and tested those limits, I found out they just weren't there. Or at least they weren't where I thought they were. They're someplace way beyond this. Now, I've been talking about running and marathoning because that's what I have experience in. But what I'm really talking about is what's possible. You honestly have no idea what your limits are, uh, whether it's academically or artistically, uh, whatever your passion is. If you really test those limits, you're going to find out that you are capable of accomplishing way more than you ever thought possible. So I'm going to encourage you to get out there, follow your passions, test your limits, and find out something new about yourself, and really just enjoy your quest. Thank you very much. <laughs>